I'm Julie Baggett. I'm the brewmaster from Zero 040, which is the fourth project I've opened in India. And we're very glad to be offering fine handcrafted beers at our establishment. We start, we get uh, the best German and Belgian malts, and we make them according to my recipe. We take them and we mill them. Then we mash them in the vessel and use the enzymes that are in the malt to break down all of our sugars, our starches into fermentable sugars. At that point, we louder it, which removes, it, removes the sweet wort, as it's known by this point, in this vessel. We take it off the uh, spent grain husk, and uh, then we, the spent grain husk, and then we uh, move it in the brew kettle, where we add hops, and we make the protein settle out. Then we take it to the whirlpool to remove the rest of the uh, hops and uh, protein sediment. We add our finishing hops, and they are fermenting and producing alcohol and carbon dioxide. So we let them ferment all the sugars, and when fermentation is done, we send them to our bright tanks, where it is directly dispensed from our draft towers for your drinking enjoyment. The first thing I do every day when I come in, I taste every beer out of that draft faucet. It's a great job. The, best, the worst day in the brewery is better than the best day behind a desk. We dispense it out of the bright tanks and it's done. Oh yes, uh, we have five flavors available right now. We've got the Goswami, which is a Basmati Hellas, made with 20% grist of the best Basmati rice. We also have Blue Camel, which is a Hefeweizen with these clove and banana flavors that you would expect from the yeast. Then we have Shivasan Porter, which is an oat porter, very good with beef and mutton and chocolate desserts. Then we have the X, which is I am drinking right now. This is an India red ale, which is a brand new style. Nobody has made this in India before. Rich red color and tropical dry hops. We are one of the few breweries who are doing dry hops and a great effect. We know it's proper every day that we serve it. We also have the Gosa, which is uh, called Flying Hati. It is a uh, obscure German style made with um, sour malt, sea salt, and coriander. It's almost like a Belgian beer or a Berliner Weiss. And we like to add a little fruit syrup to flavor it up and make it nice and drinkable. So y'all come down and try some of that while we got it in the tank. Well, we still haven't mashed in yet, so uh, we're, we're waiting for water. So uh, I hope within the next couple of hours we'll be able to mash in. Otherwise, we'll be here all night brewing beer. Okay. So when we start brewing, we mash in our best Belgian and German malt right in this vessel. And we take it up through the temperature process to get the uh, fermentable sugars and unfermentable sugars that provide body to the beer. So we work all that out in this vessel. Then we transfer to the louder time. Do you want to get some action shots of the inside? where we've got rakes, and we've got a sparge ring, and we can rinse all that sugar off the grain. Get every last drop of delicious fermentable sugar. So once we get it off the grain, we move it back here. We add hops, boil it for a half an hour, hour and a half, and then run it through the whirlpool. This is where we add our finishing hop and let the protein finish settling out. And, uh, after this point, it goes through the heat exchanger, and it's going to be reduced in temperature from 100 degrees Celsius down to 20 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to mix it with the yeast, add some oxygen, and let the yeast do what they do. The yeast is the harding, hardest working individuals in our brewery. They work far harder than we do, and we bust our butts here. We transfer the hot wort from the whirlpool through the heat exchanger and we reduce that temperature from 100 degrees Celsius down to 20 degrees Celsius. So it can mix with the yeast and have an appropriate fermentation. See, this tank is actively fermenting. Um, they're producing a great deal of carbon dioxide. So that also indicates to me that we're producing plenty of alcohol for your drinking enjoyment. Once have gone dormant, we can transfer our beers off the yeast, carbonate them in line and put them in these bright tanks where they get chilled and carbonated to proper serving conditions. So this is our beer pump manifold. This enables us to send all 
six beer capacities to three floors worth of draft towers. Each one has to be custom calibrated for the amount of pressure it takes to get to that draft tower. And they go into this line right here, which we call a python, and then it's ready for serving at that point. This is our malt mill. We take all of these 25 kilogram sacks of malt that we're gonna use to mash in the brew, and we run them through the mill to get them uh, small enough particles to uh, break the sh starches down so the enzymes can turn them into sugars and large enough where we still have husk material to make sure we can louder the beer effectively. So you can see the rollers when you, uh, when you look in here and uh, I've got two rollers and that's how I crush my malt. So once our beer hits the bright tanks we can start pouring and this is where the fun begins. Nice pour, a little light on the carbonation for pourability and drinkability. When I construct all my beers, I make them to the two liter drinkability. I want a customer to be able to come in my restaurant and drink the beer of their choice up to two liters at one sitting if they want to without palate tiredness or a hangover. And I'm proud to have created such beers. Thank you. Is that good? Hold like this, yeah. I gotta pour the froth off of it though. Yeah. Don't be filming me pouring the froth off. That's, that's... Froth, froth is No bueno. Yeah. Crabity. Let me, let me try a different beer. Um, see if I get a little better. 